I'm Vanessa Valiente, San Diego's number one personal stylist. And I'm Paulina Fessia, aspiring personal stylist, and today I will be interviewing Vanessa. Paulina and I have literally just met today, <laughs> and I'm going to answer her questions today the way I answer all the questions of personal stylists who hire me to coach them. And I coach stylists all across the country. And so first things first, I have to figure out literally exactly what you're doing and what you want. If you're comfortable sharing, how many uh, clients do you have right now as a personal stylist? I have had probably around 20, I want to say it was 23 the last time I counted. Okay, cool. Yeah. And have you been doing this for a year? Since years? the middle of 2020. Okay. So about almost four years now. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, and you're starting in the middle of the pandemic. So it was just virtual then? Completely virtual. Yeah. Gotcha. I've had one official in-person styling client ever, but I do think I work a lot better with virtual. I feel like I can reach more women and I love per online shopping, to be honest. Yeah, so. yeah. that's most efficient these <laughs> yeah, days. Yeah. And store shopping is more about the experience because right. they don't have the ranges of sizes. They certainly don't have the items. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm shopping for a client for a last minute event mm -hmm. or travel, what I do is when I go, I still do it online. And then I just hit the selection of pick up today. Yes. It's limited. Yeah. It's much different. So it is. It's not as good. Mm -hmm. Online shopping is what I only do with my clients nowadays. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, and how has that been for you since you started completely in person? I did. I started completely in person. Um, I should have done that sooner, but people weren't comfortable with it. People want that in-person experience. Mm -hmm. Online shopping is irritating. The returns are irritating. It the is. thing is, it's so much more efficient. Mm -hmm. They save so much more money on my hourly rate because instead of me showing up at a store, hours were there and we're only coming up with a few things yeah. and we still have to go online shopping because we didn't have what we didn't find what we need plus it's super stressful for me and the less stress i have the more clients i can take on and the longer i can work with a client in a given day week or month so exactly it has eliminated so much stress for me because knowing that i'm not going to find what i need in the store yeah. was always weighing on me and i've been doing this for 17 years so that was over a decade of a lot of stress and just from the one client that i had the experience with doing that I know it was overwhelming on her part because when somebody's hiring a personal stylist, from what I've noticed is they don't know what they're doing. So when it comes down to that point, they're like, well, I don't know, you tell me. And they're just like, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming to be honest. Yeah. And because there's a lot of pressure because when you're at home, like we're either going to buy that today or not. Mm -hmm. And of course we can take pictures of tags and you know, we'll yes. think about this for later. But if you're at home, you're like, it's okay, sit on it. I really yes. want this for you. I think it's gonna be amazing, but you don't have to keep it. Sit on it for 48 hours and return it if you want. To. And it's completely up to them. There's no stress, there's no pressure. It's mm -hmm. just whenever they're ready, whenever yes. their wallet's ready, anything mm -hmm. like that. You don't have to do anything right away. Yeah, and there's snacks. Yeah, <laughs> very true, <laughs> very true. Okay, so you've had 23 clients. You want to be a personal stylist full time. I do, yes. And how did you develop your process? Great question. I knew I wanted to work with women who needed help putting outfits together and what makes them feel good. And honestly, I just saw a need for that on social media. There's, I think at around like 2016 is when fashion bloggers really started, mm -hmm. you know, blowing up all over Instagram specifically, but especially in the pandemic, people were completely oh, eliminating their closets. They were they were getting and fashion changed fashion absolutely changed. yeah that's when everybody was like marie condoing mm -hmm. their house yeah. and they were just getting rid of so many things in their closet i remember seeing so many videos of women being like do i get rid of this like does this look good on me and even now i see there's this trend going around on tiktok where mm -hmm. people are looking at their color analysis yeah. and they're like does this look good on me and they're just asking the internet so there's <laughs> definitely the demand people don't know what looks good on them yeah and I just feel like, I mean, I'm sure you feel this way too, but I just have an eye for these things. Mm -hmm. And I love working with, with, with women and seeing their confidence boost after, you know, wearing a good outfit and all that stuff. So that's kind of where, why I wanted to get started in the first place. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I knew I work better online. I don't want to make anybody feel pressured. So, and I just look, I like seeing all of the options that the internet has to offer. Yeah. And you know, when you go to our mall, it's limited at, there's, like you were saying, there just isn't always going to be the sizes. Mm -hmm. So I thought it'd be better for me to start with Focus that and just to see how I liked it. I ended up really loving it. And so I started by offering just um, virtual wardrobe rebuilds. And that's mm -hmm. my my best selling package right now. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it for like 50 bucks because I just wanted to get hired. And yeah, to yeah see. of course. That's a good. That's a good yeah. Thing. Just to see. I formed a Google survey to see, you know, is this what they were looking for? Was I able to answer their questions? And I've gotten a really amazing feedback. 
So I knew, okay, I am good at You're this. You're on something. I, yeah, I'm like, okay, I had a good idea. So then I started offering event styling as a part of that. And then from there, that's when I started offering the in-person. But yeah, I just don't see as much of a demand for that for like my target audience. And again, I just work better online. So those are the two that I've mainly been focusing on. I also recently added vacation. Mm -hmm. um, people always want to shop before a vacation yeah. and they're like, I don't know what to wear to Cancun or mm -hmm. Hawaii. So mm -hmm. I started incorporating that as well. All right, so your questions for me. I feel like I have a lot of context here. I can give you the correct advice. Okay, so I talked a little bit about the different areas that I started offering personal styling um, services, but I wanted to go into more detail for people who may not know the different areas of styling and what comes along with that, like event styling, um, you know, image consulting, which is what I was doing, but just a quick overview on the different areas of personal styling that people can explore. Well, I think the one thing that people are missing, current personal stylists, aspiring personal stylists, is to be create less walls around these categories, because mm -hmm. for me, it's about the person. So I noticed uh, right away that my clients weren't leaving. They weren't going anywhere. They wanted more and more. And I was like, oh, great, perfect, because mm -hmm. I need money. <laughs> <laughs> really, the key, in the beginning, I was very, uh, I started very young, I was 24 years old, and I felt nervous to pressure the client in any way. Mm -hmm. So I only gave them what they asked for. And so I thought my service was completely tailored, and I you know, would say that my service is tailored to you. Really what I was doing was, I will do what you ask. And mm -hmm. in doing that, I found out all the things that people needed. And I got very overwhelmed. I accepted far too many clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I have worked with 500 clients and none of them would go away. So yeah. it was a lot of work. And when I realized as I got more mature and a stronger voice and started to uh, raise my rates and kind of, kind of clear my roster a little bit, I would go back to clients I hadn't seen in three years and I was like, what happened? Your shoes are terrible. Like, how could I have left this person without addressing their shoes? It's because they didn't ask about it. Mm -hmm. They wanted their clothing. And since they didn't mention their shoes, I didn't do their shoes. And so these days, I'm a very strong personal stylist. I care so much about my clients and I have cleared my roster so I can focus on my clients. So now when I go in, I'm like, how's your underwear? Where's your gym clothes? What travel's coming up? What event? What are these t-shirts? Like, what is Everything. all this? Everything. Yeah. There is no limit to your service. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, your client should never not need you. And I don't say need like, oh, of course, it's a, it's a luxury. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, a service nobody needs. But style evolves. Bodies change. Mm -hmm. Style never ends. Personal styling never ends. It's more about the client. So I have a, some clients that have such big lives. They're doing birthday parties. They're on camera. They're at their children's school. Then they're on... Um, you know, doing business meetings, they're mm -hmm. going to court, they're in litigation, you know, they're doing all these different things, uh, especially anyone who's on camera a lot, they're like, they need different clothes, different looks, people who travel a lot. It never ends. Mm -hmm. And I think the trouble that a lot of stylists are getting into is trying to define their service. So here's the travel package. I'm actually not a big fan of packages because mm -hmm. you start to pack them for a trip and you realize what happened, your athletic clothes is crap. You know, like it's better to look at it more wholly each session could be more dedica dedicated to that. Okay, this session we're working on your athleisure. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're working on your event. Okay, now we're working on your shoes. Like you can definitely split up the sessions like that, mm -hmm. but they need so much help. The only limit should be budget. I like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just factual. People yeah. really need help. And I've really noticed as I've coached a lot of stylists, they're not thinking globally for the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking of it as a whole. They're thinking of these really limiting categories that limits the client and it limits the stylist. Yeah, I think I'm at that beginning stage mm -hmm. too that you were mentioning where it's just whatever you need. I, that's actually a question that I have literally asked my clients in our like onboarding call is, do you feel like you're good with your shoes? Do you think you know you need to incorporate more variety in your shoes? What do you, what do you think you need help shopping And that for? is the correct way to start. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, what do you need? Because you do not want to, if they say, I love my athletic mm -hmm. wear, you're not gonna touch their athletic wear. Yes. But as you work with them and as they gain their trust, if you're like, what's wrong with your athletic wear? You're like, I just stepped in with a client recently. She's like, oh yeah, I've been fine. I've been working here for years. And I was like, it's actually not fine. Yeah. And she's like, really? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, okay, do it. I don't think she ever really would have gotten there, mm -hmm. but now that she's wearing quality athletic wear, because she's like, I just work out at my house. You know, there's always an excuse. Right. 
And, but then we did it and she's like, oh my God, I feel so much better at home. My self-esteem is higher. I'm more comfortable. It's more flattering. Now I'll leave the house in this, mm -hmm. you know, whereas before she's like, oh, I, I don't leave the house in this. I was like, I don't want you to own clothes where you can't leave the yeah. house in it. I want you to feel freedom. I want you to feel good about yourself 24-7. Yeah. Again, you don't ever want to push anything on a client, but you're also there to be a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. And so if you get in there and you're working with them and you notice a problem, you can let them know, hey, I noticed that your athletic wear um, actually is lacking this. It doesn't have uh, really good colors. It's not very flattering. I see that it's older. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wear and tear. I know you mentioned you love it, but would you like to add that to our list to make work on next season or next year mm -hmm. or next week? And then they'll say yes or no. I do know you have a video dedicated to hourly rates versus packages. Mm -hmm. I actually saw it three years ago when you posted it too, but um, I watched it again uh -huh. last night alarm bells were going off because I started thinking I would love to have returning clients right mm -hmm. now I'm at the point where they hire me for the war the wardrobe rebuild and they're like I understand what my style is now and I kind of send them on their way sure but then I'm always looking for new clients mm -hmm. and I've I've left my clients very happy I've seen it in the surveys and the reviews but like how do I get them to come back how do I how do I get them to work with them again? Well, they're probably more budget minded mm -hmm. and they probably didn't need as much help as um, other kinds of clients. One of the reasons I have been so successful and people are very have gravitated towards me is I'm there to do the work with the unglamorous client. Mm -hmm. So I work with people who have a lot of body issues or are aging or, you know, there's so many different things going on mm -hmm. where they're not going to manage style or they're very, very busy and they want to outsource. It's a lot more fun for young stylists to dress fellow, kind of slightly right. confused, fun young women. Mm -hmm. Like, that's great. But they're really not going to come back that often. Yeah. You really are going to get those lifetime clients with people who are either extremely busy or have a really unique body type that's difficult to dress. Mm -hmm. And those are the lifetime clients, especially aging clients. They need a lot of help because they're going through. So if you get a client like in their 30, third round 35, you're going to end up dressing them perhaps for a wedding, for, um, you know, pre-baby, during baby, after baby, then later you're going to dress them when they're going through menopause. So all these different things happen and right. they're going to need a stylist to help them through that. So a lot of my clients have been with me for 15 years. Yeah. A lot happens in 15 years. A lot of my clients have been people who are around my age in like late twenties, new moms, mm -hmm. very first time moms. And they, don't know how to dress their new body. Yeah. They're they're going through such a massive change in their their body, their physical appearance and just their life. Things are obviously going to be more chaotic than it was when you were 23. <laughs> Those have been a lot of my clients as new moms and they don't know how to dress their new body type and they need help. Mhm. Mm and it's funny cuz actually a lot of my clients they'll kind of go away mm -hmm. when they're pregnant, having babies, and then they'll come to me when they're done. The clients who really, when I've really come in and be like, I'm your stylist, I'm here to help you, I have dressed them through their babies, through every single baby. Mm -hmm. I've gotten them the transitional wardrobe when they're like in between the weight, you mm -hmm. know, just a few pieces here and there. And they're like, that was, I can't believe I should have done that. I should have done that with my first two babies. And But I yeah. stepped in and was like, listen, you're going to like this third baby so much more if you let me help you mm -hmm. throughout this process. And she was like, oh my God, you're right. Yeah. I can't believe I tried to do that. You know, and that's nice. People don't want to be wasteful. They don't want to buy a lot of clothes, but that's for us to come in. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients no a lot. I'm like, no, you're not going to wear that enough. No, it's too trendy. And they'll listen, of course. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is expensive, but in the end, you get so much more out of it. Mm -hmm. So I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next week with more tips on becoming a successful personal stylist.